Hello, this is David Gilmore known as LDS Prepper and we are in my geothermal greenhouse which is dedicated to growing citrus trees here in zone 5A in southeast Idaho and today we're talking about the best self-wicking container for growing any kind of a plant but specifically what I'm using it here for is growing citrus trees and tropical trees here in southeast Idaho in zone 5A. So if you haven't seen my YouTube videos on the geothermal greenhouse, go to ldsprepper.com and go to my playlist and take a look at that and learn how the uh, US government can help uh, cost share your geothermal greenhouse so you can grow food year round no matter where you live. Now I am a huge fan of the mint ladder gardening method and you can learn more about that at my YouTube channel here on uh, at ldsprepper.com but today what we're talking about are the self wicking containers and the reason why I'm using the self wicking containers for these fruit trees because these are full size fruit, fruit trees I did not buy semi dwarf or dwarf fruit trees uh, so um, I, I want to uh, keep the trees uh, from growing full size so I'll take care of that by pruning and also by putting them in these half whiskey barrels which will cause the roots to, um, to uh, get, limit the size of the tree. Another reason why I'm using the whiskey barrels is because I may want to move these trees around in the greenhouse and place them in a different order. So this allows me portability with my fruit trees. Now I've had fruit trees in whiskey barrels before and they work great uh, but what I'm doing here is I'm having a, uh, I built a self wicking system so that uh, the trees will be watered and I don't have to worry about being gone for two weeks, which is what just happened. And uh, I know that the, these trees will be, uh, get all the water that they need because the neighborhood uh, boys that I have come take care of our garden while we're gone can just walk in here, uh, take a look at the water indicator and know that the whether the tree needs to get watered or not. So it's very easy, low maintenance, and I'm going to show you a very inexpensive way to do this. All right, so how do I how do I do this? First thing I did is I got some whiskey barrels simply because I like how they look. You don't have to use a whiskey barrel, you can use any kind of a solid container. And then traditionally what people do is they will drill a hole down here um, I'm using four inch drain pipe so they drill a whole three inches here on the side and then you would fill the container with water until uh, uh, water was coming out of here on the bottom and, and then you'd know that it has it has all the water that it needs well uh, you can't tell how much water is in there until you start putting water in the container so I had some uh, inch and a half PVC pipes uh, laid around from the first geothermal greenhouse that I made. I cut them 18 inches long and those are where I put my water gauge in here. And I built this water gauge very inexpensively. This is um, a wine um, bottle corks. I went to uh, Idaho brewery and they gave me a bag of them at no cost. Then this is an 18 inch skewer with some yellow electrical tape on here. And uh, I'm, since I'm using four inch uh, drain, perforated drain pipe, I want to have an inch of space uh, um, above the water so that the, the roots will self prune. So I measured here three inches and anytime that the water is between these two yellow marks, then I know that there is plenty of water for the plant. It's not going to be over watered and it's not going to be underwatered. And as this goes down, if I can only see that I have this three quarter inch piece of yellow tape here, then I know, hey, I, I really need to get water in here. But anywhere in between these two pieces of tape, I'm golden. Um, we've got uh, all the water in here that the plants need. So let's talk about how we built this. Uh, first of all, because these whiskey barrels aren't watertight, I had to come up with a way to make them watertight. I have some six mil greenhouse plastic that I hadn't used from the first greenhouse that I built. I just cut the, a, a nice big square piece, put it inside, stapled it in so it would hold up on the sides. And then 
um, leveled the container because we are dealing with water. We want to make sure that the water is, uh, the container is level so we have accurate reading of water. Then the next thing is, is the per, uh, perforated four inch drain pipe. Now this is a socked uh, drain pipe and the reason why I have this is because you don't want the dirt going inside of the pipe. Well, what a lot of people do is they'll get uh, some uh, landscaping fabric, generally commercial grade, so it's very expensive, and they'll cut a piece uh, three feet by four feet and they'll lay it over the pipes. And they'll have like two or three pieces of pipe in here. I just took an 80 inch length of uh, socked uh, perforated four inch drain pipe and I just zip tied the end here on both ends and uh, now I have a sealed container and I don't have to worry about soil getting to do it. Now I really don't think that you need a socked uh, drain pipe. I think if you just had a regular four inch perforated drain pipe here and you wanted to do this really quickly just go buy some end caps and put them on the end, stick them inside the barrel, and you're good to go. But uh, uh, this came with the fabric on it, so it made it easy to uh, make it sealed so the dirt doesn't get inside. The next thing I need is I need a way to um, know how much water is in there. So <clears throat> I took this inch and a half pipe here, and I j all I did is uh, cut a an X into the pipe down here. Just took my uh, uh, razor and cut an X here. And then when I take this pipe and I push it inside, the fabric that's already on the pipe seals up the hole. You can see that? So uh, you're not gonna get dirt down inside of here. So that works really, really well. And then um, I just took the uh, water indica level indicator, which is 18 inches. 18 inch skewer and uh, that I uh, punched through this cork here after drilling a hole and I just put it down inside the hole and then as I fill it up with water I know exactly how much water is in there. So let's talk about the soil mix. You can buy potting mix <coughs> um, and pay four to five times more for potting mix or you can mix it yourself. I bought some peat moss here. I have some um, concrete sand that I purchased here locally at a concrete plant in Idaho Falls, Burns Concrete. And I, I do a two to one ratio. So I took four scoops of peat moss, two scoops of uh, sand, put it here in my mixer. Then I took um, my, pre, uh, my weekly feed made from the LDS Prepper premium micronutrient mix that has all the essential nutrients that your plants need in it. And I took a quarter cup of this and I took the pre-plant mix uh, and I took a half a cup of that and I put it inside the mixer here and I just mix it together and then I dump it in this container and you can see I end up with this beautiful, beautiful potting mix. It has all the nutrients and minerals that the plant needs and it's through the entire container because every four scoops every four shovelfuls of peat moss and uh, two shovelfuls of sand I'd mixed in a quarter cup of weekly feed and a half cup of pre-plant and so as I put this into the container the nutrients are all the way through the soil and what's great about it is when I want to feed again I'll just sprinkle those on the top and just water it in with a watering hose very very inexpensive, very easy to do. The weekly feed has all the 16 essential minerals that plants need, including the molybdenum and the manganese and copper and the zinc and the iron and all of those that all the plants need. You can get your uh, 20 ounce packages of uh, LDS Prepper Premium Micronutrient Mix at, the, at ldsprepperstore.com. That's ldsprepperstore.com and 20 ounces will make 60 pounds of the weekly feed. Super inexpensive, uh, all the nutrients that your plants need and you're golden for all your vegetable plants, fruit trees, berries, roses, ornamentals, and so forth. So this is a great method, very low maintenance uh, for uh, me to uh, grow my fruit trees. Now you could also grow vegetables in this 
I don't necessarily recommend it unless you're just having a hobby garden. If you're growing food as if your life depends on it, which is how I grow my food, then I would highly recommend using the Mint and Lattice Gardening Method. You can get the Mint and Lattice Gardening Course book at LDSPrepperStore.com and learn how to grow food as if your life depends on it. Pick up the, the um, nutrient mix there and learn everything you need to learn on how to grow food in uh, any uh, uh, agricultural zone anywhere in the world. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you. Um, one thing that you'll normally see in wicking containers is you'll see a hole down here, but I don't need to have to uh, drill a hole and I don't have to guess how much water is in here because I have my uh, water indicator right here. Um, so I hope that helps. I hope you do the same thing and I hope you have great success too. If you have any questions, uh, please post them down below and I'll go through the questions and answer them for you. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if ye are prepared, ye shall not fear. Now before I sign off, this let me tell you what kind of plants that we're growing here in zone 5A in this geothermal greenhouse. So I've got my uh, plant map here and we'll just go across the, the list here. So uh, this is actually a, a Meyer lemon tree here. Then next we have a navel orange tree. Uh, here we have the goji berry. Uh, then we also have um, the LSU purple fig. And then we have the wonderful pomegranate. Now after putting these down here, I really kind of think I want the bushy kind of plants on the south. So um, I'm actually, because I can, I can just move these whiskey barrels and, and bring them over here to the, to the south end of the uh, greenhouse. Here in the center, where we have the tallest uh, part of the greenhouse, we've got a ruby red uh, grapefruit. We have Glen Mango. My wife and I just spent some time in Tahiti. Absolutely loved it and uh, want to grow our own mango. So we'll be able to grow mango trees here in southeast Idaho. Uh, I'm waiting for my uh, Haas avocado tree to show up. Then we have the locust Japanese plum here. And then here we've got uh, our Toro blueberry bush and a second Toro blueberry bush. You should always have uh, two blueberry bushes when you're growing them. Uh, then we will be moving the um, um, Meyer lemon tree here. So in the back where the Meyer is, that's where the lime tree will go. Then we have here uh, a Newell's, uh, Newell's uh, Clementine and a second Newell's Clementine because we just love those uh, little tangerines. And that's what we're able to, to grow here in these self-wicking tubs. Uh, if you have any questions, like I mentioned, uh, listen below. Again, this is LDS Prepper reminding you, if ye are prepared, ye shall not fear.